welcome to another ETN tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over the Thor 4 uh, and basically the, well, the basic uh, functions and keypads of the scope. So here you've got the power button, you just click it once and it turns on the scope and the viewfinder you will see um, the home screen. Uh, when in the home screen, uh, if you press the left, uh, the right arrow key, it will start recording video and then press it once again, it will stop recording. The left arrow key takes a picture. This uh, bottom button, the function button, uh, is used for ranging either the internal with the internal range finder or the ABL. And the center button is to confirm an action when in the menu. So when in the menu as well, this is the up and down right and left arrow keys to navigate through the menu. Uh, when the scope is powered on, Clicking the power button just once will nuke the scope, but I'll talk about that in another video. Um, pressing the power button when it's on for two seconds will prompt with a message uh, yes or no to power off the scope. And if your scope ever uh, locks up or freezes, you just hold the power button for 15, 20 seconds and it'll power off. So that's it for the keypad. Here on the right, you've got your scroll wheel for zooming in and out. Um, in the back here, you've got the uh, diopter adjustment um, for your. You can adjust for your particular eyesight. So, uh, just look through the eyepiece, uh, look at the widgets or the crosshairs, and, and kind of just turn it until the picture is nice, crisp, and clear. Uh, here in the front, you've got your focus adjustment ring for focusing at various distances. Here on the left, uh, you've got your micro SD slot. Uh, this is where you put your SD card for updating your scope, or this is where your photos and videos will be stored. The next port is your micro USB, uh, sorry, USB Type C port. Uh, this is used for charging. Uh, the charging time from zero to 100% is six hours with a two amp USB wall charger. And the battery run time is uh, approximately 16 hours on one charge. So there you go, that's the basic kind of overlay of the of the scope and next I'll go into the features. Okay so now I want to go over the electronic compass on the Thor. Uh, when you're in the home screen on the top middle of the screen you're going to see three different abbreviations. Um, they can be CAL, uh, AIR and SMF. Uh, the first one CAL for calibrate. Uh, if you see this you're going to need to calibrate basically your scope and to do that you need to uh, spin the scope in three axes. So to calibrate it, you just hold the scope like this, and you're going to spin one time like that, one time like this, and just one more like this. And that should calibrate the scope, and on the top uh, of the screen you will see the electronic compass. The next uh, abbreviation is error, that's uh, something like a critical error. Um, that should happen very rarely, I think well, if only like the internal chip breaks, uh, but otherwise you're not going to get it, and I haven't seen really that happen yet. Um, the next one is SMF, which stands for Strong Magnetic Field. Uh, that can happen if you're somewhere around heavy power lines. Uh, anything that has a magnetic field, uh, it'll mess up your compass a little bit, but that, shouldn't, that won't happen in the field, because um, basically there's not anything that can actually affect it. So, and also keep in mind that the uh, scope works best, or sorry, the compass works best when the scope is parallel to the ground. And that's pretty much it for the compass. And there you go. This is the home screen. This is the first thing you'll see after turning on the device. Uh, it consists of scales, status bar icons, and different information widgets. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the main operations. Uh, the first one is zoom level. Use the scroll wheel on the left side of the scope to zoom in and out. Zoom level is displayed in the zoom widget on the home screen. Uh, please note when the device is activated for the first time, you need to configure the lens options in the pop-up window before zooming. Please refer to system settings device type. Now the power button when you're in the home screen, uh, pressing it once will do a manual nuke. So just press it now. And you can nuke the device when needed. Um, the left, the, pressing the left button will take a photo. So just press it once and one photo will be taken. Uh, video recording. By pressing the right button, you'll be able to record video. 
um, if you use normal mode or start RAV, uh, RAV is recall activated video mode, the video recording mode can be switched in the system setting option. Please note recording will be automatically stopped when the memory card is full or the battery is out of power. Now the shortcut carousel. Uh, the carousel is your access to a number of shortcuts that allow you to quickly access your scope's features. Click the OK button on the home screen to access the carousel. Use the left and right buttons to move between the functions uh, to turn on a particular function or to turn it off you should click the OK button while the function is being selected. Uh, the Thor 4 has two modes of operation, basic and advanced. Uh, the basic mode has the following features, system settings, zero reticle, advanced shortcut, contrast, and well, we're back to system settings. So the advanced mode has the following options and you can turn it on here. Just press the OK button to turn on advanced shortcuts and it has the following featured options. Rangefinder, Nuke, Close Shortcut, System Settings, Contrast, Zero Reticle, Ballistic Calculator, Recall Activated Video, Wi-Fi, Gallery, Environment, Distance Entry, and back to Advanced Shortcut. And that's it for the basic kind of features and modes uh, of the Thor 4. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.